Hey guys, it is me, the Dump Fanatic, and welcome to week two of the Pokemon Premier League Division 1 Season 6. This week we are up against Ellie and the Accrington Stantler. Now we've both got off to very different beginnings of the season. Um, I will give you a quick second to pause the video if you want to go watch week one first. Um, but I did in fact win week one in a close 1-0 over Paulie Mac and the West Coast Wingulls. Um, Ellie, however, did lose 5-0 to the current leader of the table, um, Kyle and the Harlem Globe Trotters. Um, so Ellie has got a lot to, to play for here. Um, she's got that pressure on her obviously already that she has lost a game. She's at the bottom of the pack somewhere and she's got to try and play better. So um, with that in mind, you can see the teams on the screen, but I'll quickly run over Ellie's draft for you. Um, she has got, I say that I had it in front of me and I've now lost it. Here we go. We have got Victini, Skarmory, Flaugius, Mamoswine, Raikou, Tentacruel, Mega Sceptile, Pangoro, Tauros, Dublade, Tortuga. So a couple of things that stand out to me immediately when I am team building for this game. Um, Mamoswine hits literally every Pokemon I have with the coverage. Um, it gets on my draft super effectively um, and like 7 out of 9 of them are with its actual stab so switching into Mamoswine um, is going to be ridiculous uh, pretty much near impossible the best thing I have for it is a Gastrodon and if Ellie wants to run freeze dry it's probably a dead Gastrodon too so um, the other thing that I wanted to sort of point out was I was very 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 confident she's going to bring Dublade um, because Dublade is her best and probable only answer to Mega Aerodactyl, other than uh, Skarmory. But that's only if Skarmory is in. Skarmory cannot switch into two Stone Edges. So um, Dublade is her only real answer to the um, to the Mega Aerodactyl. She could have bought if I like Tortuga. I guess <laughs> I don't know how well it would have done. I never calc'd it. I never thought it would come. Um, only maybe if it was like week nine or ten. But um, I wasn't really too sure what else could come. It could have been a real mixture of different things. Um, but as you can see in front of you, um, I will go over the team very briefly. Um, we have got a Choice Scarfed Jirachi. Let me actually just... Uh, I've got Showdown open. I've forgotten the team because I played this over a week... Uh, no, about a week ago. Um, we've got Choice Scarf Jirachi with Iron Head, U-Turn, Fire Punch and Zen Headbutt. Covers our team really nicely. Um, I think it hits everything at least... I think it hits everything super effective, apart from Raikou, but Zen Headbutt flinches are a thing. Um, next up, we have got uh, Specially Defensive Arcanine, Flamethrower Bulldoze, Will-O-Wisp Morning Sun. Um, just there to kind of be a Victini check, really, because Victini is always scary no matter what your draft is. Um, next up, we have uh, Fidel Gastro, the Gastrodon, um, and that is Max Fizz Death, because, like I've said, it's the best thing I have for a Mamoswine. Uh, Earth Power School, Toxic Recover, very standard um, set really. Toxic might seem a bit stupid actually, I'm not too sure why I did bring that in the end. Because we've got an immunity in Dublade, immunity in the um, Tentacruel and an immunity in the Skarmory. And then Toxicing the rest, it could be alright maybe if there's like a sub Raikou, um, but otherwise probably not that helpful and a Raikou isn't going to want to be staying in on a Gastrodon anyway. Next up, we have got uh, Lucario. I believe we are, yes, we are jolly with a, a bit of speed. I think it's enough to outspeed max speed uh, Mamoswine. Uh, with agility, close combat, earthquake, meteor mash. Ellie can't deal with Lucario. Um, actually, I say that, no. This is a, I made a change. I removed earthquake and put on dark pulse and made it a mixed set um, because of the Dublade, actually. So I tell a lie. Um, however, Ellie's team, as you can see, can't handle Lucario. Um, once the Tentacruel is gone, even then I doubt it will take a close combat too well. Um, but even then, uh, Skarmory dies to two close combats, Mamoswine dies to a close combat, even Raikou dies to a close combat. Um, Dark Pulse will do a load to Victini, um, as it will to Dublade as well. Then Tentacruel, um, penultimate Mon we have here in the team is a Fizz Death. Clef, another thing that I've got here to try and take on the Mamoswine, Flame for a Moonblast, Softball, Stealth Rock, pretty straightforward for the Bibiri Berry. And then finally, we have got the Mega Aerodactyl with Stone Edge, Roost, Aerial Ace, and Earthquake. Just enough speed to outspeed a Mega Sceptile, which she has in her draft, and she didn't bring. I was a bit undecided whether she'd bring that or not. Um, 
like it deals with half my draft really well. Like it would deal with the Gastrodon, it would be able to hit the Jirachi and hit the Arcanine with Earthquake. So it could have done some damage, but we don't see it, which is fine by me because I don't have any. I oh, know I do have a Scarf on Jirachi. I'm I'm talking a load of crap at this point. I'd like to point out if I haven't already, I am extremely hungover right now, and I do feel sick. So if I stop, it's probably because I'm dead. So <clears throat> anyway, we're going to get into the game versus Ellie here. I do apologise if I get some uh, commentary wrong here because a I'm, I'm so hungover, I, I don't even know what day of the week it is. Um, and secondly, this game was about a week ago. So, Ellie is going to lead with 10 tickles, the uh, tentacruel. I'm going to lead off with Jirachi, so only naturally uh, to me, I expect her to switch out because she's not going to want to take a Zen headbutt. However, she stays in, turn one, and I'm like, well, that's bad. She's not going to be going for a poison move. Um, she could go for like a scald here, so I'm going to go into my Gastrodon. I know for a fact that I can take any hit, and she does go for the Surf, which is great. Because of the Storm Drain, I'm now at plus one special attack. I did debate bringing an offensive Gastrodon this game, because it actually does really well against her like team, like water and ground as a whole. Um, but I do have the Rindo Berry, of course, and that Giga Drain doesn't even do half. Bearing in mind I'm a physically defensive Gastrodon, that's that's not too bad. Um, but we do see this is a Life Orb uh, Tentacruel. Not entirely sure why she's got offensive Tentacruel. I think I did ask, and I think she did give me her reason, but I don't remember it. Um, Gastron's still too important. I can still live an earthquake if needed from the Mamo Swine, so I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to go back into Jirachi because I'm expecting another Giga Drain. But Ellie does make the read and go for another Surf. So if I'd have stayed in there, I'd have had my Jirachi at full health. But it's not too bad, considering that's a Life Orb hit. It doesn't even do half to an offensive um, Jirachi. I'm, I'm not too upset. In comes the Victini. Now I know I'm Scarfed, so it's going to be at least a speed tie. However, I do not want to lose Jirachi at this point, because the Choice Scarf is still going to potentially help uh, late game against the fast Raikou, where I can flinch it to death, potentially. Um, so I'm going to go to Arcanine, because it's my dedicated check to this thing. Um, and Ellie is just going to go straight out for the Psychic, which is great, because I am specially defensive. And that does, like, 30% maybe, so... I'm thinking here, that's cool, I can like Morning Sun or Toxic or something, um, but I'm actually going to bring Bulldoze this game, um, kind of like to help with the speed of this Victini and um, the Raikou, um, because then if I can't set up an agility with Lucario, it will help Lucario do some work. Um, but Ellie can't really do too much to me here, I am taunted so I can't actually go for any kind of support move, so I can't click Willow and I can't click Morning Sun. I'm going to click Bulldoze again, because uh, I want to lower the speed of that Victini even more. Uh, voice break. And I want to lower the speed of anything that comes in. She obviously isn't going to bring in the uh, Skarmory. And the Tentacruel is gone, so not really anything too great to switch in uh, on the Arcanine. However, um, I'm going to bring in Gastron here, and Ellie is going to click Earthquake. Um, I'm kind of sacking the Gastrodon off at this point, because I feel Arcanine is too important for the Dublade. Obviously, um, Gastron could do some great work against it, because obviously it does resist the steel. Um, so does Arcanine. So, um, in comes the Skarn reaction. I'm not quite, like, quite sure why Ellie swapped out there. Um, and she risked the school, uh, burning the Skarmory, that would have been great, it would have nullified the leftovers, it would have weakened her Brave Bird. Um, I'm going to switch out here, I'm going to keep this thing as Death Fodder a bit for a bit later on. And I'm going to go back out into my Arcanine, because I can freely Morning Sun on this thing, and I can scare it out with the Flamethrower. And I do have uh, Will-O-Wisp, which I can go for as well, just in case. Um, Ellie does go for the Brave Bird here, that's fine, it's not going to do much to me, because... Actually, it does a reasonable amount, I, I should say, because that does about 50 damage, um, even after the Intimidate. But I'm not physically defensive. Um, I'm going to go for the Will-O-Wisp, and of course I miss. Um, which is a shame, and now Ellie gets her Spike up. I'm not too upset by this, because um, she doesn't have Stealth Rocks up, and uh, my Aerodactyl will not be hit by the Spike. So I'm a bit relieved it's not Stealth Rocks, really, and that it is only Spikes. Uh, I do go for the Flamethrower here, because I want this thing weakened. So if I keep this thing at about half... Um, uh, air is no longer a stop to Aerodactyl, um, and Ellie just decides to click Toxic here, so I'm trading my Arcanine for uh, this Skarmory at this point, and on, upon reflection, it's probably not my brightest idea ever, because I do need this thing for the Dewblade, and I'm now at a point where it's pretty much over against Dewblade, um, because if I switch it in, he'll just ki uh, Ellie will just kill me with a Shadow Sneak. So I'm going to keep it, I've got two bits of Death Order here, I'm going to go into the Gastrodon, um, sack that thing off, at this point in the game, I'm like, okay, I need to keep Arcanine because of Intimidate. That could really help against Dublade late game. Um, but Ellie does make a switch into Victini. And um, 
that's fine by me. I'm going to have to let Gastron go down here. I don't want to switch anything in on this Victini. And if this thing goes down, I know it's not Scar, because I've seen the leftovers. It gives me a free chance to Mega Evolve with my Aerodactyl. And uh, threaten this thing out with a Stone Edge. <clears throat> but obviously because Ellie does have the Dewblade, I'm already pretty certain it's there exclusively for the Mega Aerodactyl. It's her switching every time. In team building, I did nearly put a uh, Fire Blast on this thing, but I think Earthquake did about the same amount. So um, Earthquake kind of fit Ellie's team more. So I have gone for Earthquake over like Fire Coverage. Um, but I'm going to click Earthquake here. <clears throat> I don't think it would have actually killed the Victini. So if she had stayed in, she might have lived and that could have been a bit concerning. Um, but we do stay in, I do click Earthquake and it's going to do about 30%. So if I predict this thing switch in again, actually it might it, even up to 35% maybe. Um, this thing can't really switch in again. Um, because if it does, it can only hit me with Shadow Sneak and that won't be doing too much to me because Aero is quite bulky. Um, I am going to go into my Arcanine here and I am going to get that Intimidate off. And I believe Ellie is just going to go for an Iron Head here because I'm going to side just a Shadow Claw. Um, so if I had to say no with Aero actually, that could have been a bit problematic. I do get crit. I don't know if it matters. Probably probably not to be honest. Um, even at minus one. Because I was specially defensive. Now this is where I get my big boy pants on. I bring in the Fable. I do have the Babiri Berry but Ellie doesn't know that yet. Um, I am going to click Stealth Rocks because I need it to help me kill this Victini now. Um, and weaken things like Dewblade. The chip damage on Dewblade could be crucial um, for helping kill, uh, uh, sorry, helping Aerodactyl kill at late game if needed. Um, but we do have it up for the Victini. And this one, uh, the Victini is going to go for a Psychic. And I am Fizz Death, so I'm quite surprised at how well we took that Psychic. Um, we do go for Moonblast because I can't hit this Victini. I, there was whatever moveset I bought, there was going to be a Mon on Ellie's team that I couldn't really hit. And I had to bring Flamethrower because otherwise Skarmory came in and set hazards up on me the whole time. Um, Ellie goes for Taunt here. I don't remember if we've seen it against the Arcanine or not. Um, but if I didn't, um, I, I, think I, I think she did go for it then. So I just kind of brain farted and clicked soft boiled. That's fine. Um, I'm going to switch out here. I'm going to take the gamble that she's going to go for a Searing Shot and she doesn't burn me um, and get back on the front foot. It was a play I needed to make at this point, otherwise I was just losing Mons um, and I need Mons to sack basically to get around this Dewblade. Um, so Victini's in again against the Mega Aero and she's not going to want to take a Stone Edge. And this time I am going to go for the Stone Edge. She's going to predict me to go for the Earthquake this time and go into the, um, the Skarmory, but I'm going to go for the Stone Edge. And I am going to land it, and I am going to get a completely useless crit. Um, so we're, we're pretty much there for useless crits, one to one. Um, in comes the Dewblade, though. I, I don't want to stay in. There might be a chance I could take an Iron Head, um, but I don't want to. And I don't think I could take an Iron Head and then a Shadow Sneak. So I'm going to have to switch out into the Clefable again. And we are going to see the Iron Head this time. And even with like the Babiri Berry, this does very little. I was very surprised at how well... Clefable took that. Um, I would have probably been able to take it even without the berry at that point. Um, but obviously, I needed fire coverage on this for the Scarm and the Dewblade. She knows that I'll have it, otherwise, I wouldn't have brought this thing in. Um, and in comes the Victini. I was confident she was going to switch out there, so I'm just going to stay in and soft boiled. I would have also lived if she had stayed in and clicked the Iron Head. If she had clicked Sword Stance, though, game could have pretty much been over there and then. So it was quite risky. Um, but we do actually just stay in and soft boiled. Here, uh, Ellie's going to go for the Searing Shot, so again, it could have been another turn where I went into the Aerodactyl, but I didn't, and uh, that does a lot of damage, and we do get burned. We are Magic Guards, so it doesn't matter, and we're special, so it doesn't matter, but it's a good job I didn't go into Aerodactyl that turn. I'm going to Mean Blast, I just want the chip damage off on this Victini, basically. Basically, now, after Rocks, it's in guaranteed range of Dark Pulse killing from Lucario, if I can get an Agility up, and I can still potentially set up um, Agility on the Dewblade if it doesn't have Sacred Sword. We don't know the full moveset at this point. I don't think we actually ever do find out the full moveset this game. Go for another Moonblast and I do get the Special Attack Drop, which is actually really nice. It will help me um, in the next few turns. Um, but I will get killed off here by a Psychic. That's absolutely fine. Clefable did its job. It got rocks up, which is crucial, um, as you'll see later on. And uh, Generally was just annoying and chipped this Victini down. So uh, every time Victini kills something, I do get a free switch into Aerodactyl. I believe it's 4 free to Ellie at this point. Um, so I do need to get my brain into gear, really. 
um, just to try and you know get some momentum back. In comes the Mammo Swine. Um, oh, my screen's gone to sleep. That's great. Um, I do go for the Earthquake on the Switch in case uh, she does go into the Dublade. Um, and here I. I'm expecting Ellie to predict me to go into Jirachi, so I do stay in and click Earthquake again. Um, if she'd have ice sharded there, there was a chance I would have lived, because she, turns out she was choice scarfed. Um, I knew she wouldn't be able to outspeed my aero, I, I'd done it so she couldn't. Um, but the ice shard would potentially have killed me, but could not have, and it was a risk I, I won. So people might view it as a bad play, but you know, I felt that she wasn't going to be clicking Ice Shirt that turn. So I'm going to go into Jirachi this time and sack it off to the Dublade. I was expecting the Iron Head, so I thought, okay, if he Iron Heads, uh, sorry, if she, she Iron Heads, um, then I might be able to take two, completely ignoring the fact that, like I've fought a million times already, it will have Shadow Sneak, and it will take me out. But, this now leaves me with Lucario and with Mega Aerodactyl. So I'm in the same position as I was last week against Paul. Um, Ellie's got three Mons, which are just kind of weakened, um, plus uh, Raikou, but I know I can kill the Raikou. If I had clicked Agility right here, I would have just flat out won the game 2-0, um, but I didn't. I do click the Dark Pulse, and because of the Stealth Rocks, Victini is now definitely going to die uh, to this Dark Pulse. Um, so down goes Victini, and we get a crit, which didn't matter at all, but there's another crit, so that's three kills that have gone down to crits, but I don't think any of them have mattered. Um, in comes the Raikou, now I did a calc, as long as this isn't specs, I can live with something like 2 HP, um, and close combat is, I think after rocks, a guaranteed Oko, um, which is disgusting, because it's neutral damage, and it's only base 110 attack, um, we do live with 7, no para, no crit, para or crit could have ended it there, and we do take out the Raikou, close combat scares me shitless, because the animation takes so long, the health goes down so slow, um, but it does go down, and so does the uh, Lucario. So it's now Mega Aerodactyl versus the um, Dublade, and it's a lost game at this point because Dublade does live an Earthquake from this range, even with like no defense investment, just HP and a Violite. Earthquake is my best play. The calc says, uh, I think Ellie told me the HP it had, the max roll, it would have lived with one. So uh, the game is going to go to Ellie, unless I get a lucky crit. Yeah, we see a fourth critical hit kill this game, and I win purely because of that critical hit. Ellie was <laughs> rightly salty and upset by that, because I was sitting there, and I was like, you know what, I only win if I get a crit, so fair play, Ellie. It's been a close game the whole way through. I don't mind losing the game if it's 1-0 or 2-0. It means it's been a good fight, but to win in that fashion at the time was not good. I mean, now I'll take it, because that's two wins out of two for me. It's like the best start I think I've ever had in Draft League format. Um, but I, I will take that win, because a win's a win. Um, you know, it's like football. It doesn't matter how they go in the goal, they all count. So, um, we do take that win, but I was so apologetic to Ellie afterwards, because that Dublade caused me so many problems, and I knew it would be there, and I prepped for it. Um, and it just actually came down to dumb luck that I, I killed it. So, um, a really good game, Ellie. Uh, Ellie is now 0-2. Um, it should have, you know, been 1-1 if crits weren't a thing. Um, but if I'd have agility on that that switch with the Dublade, oh, um, then Lucario would have just wrecked the rest of the team. So, um, it's all in hindsight. A really good game, like I said, for about the millionth time, Ellie. Really enjoyed that. Um, make sure you go check all her links out, as well as all the other PPL links down in the description. We've got the shop, we've got the Discord, we've got the YouTube, we've got all the D1 and D2 members all the analysts, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you go and check out Ellie in particular, because obviously her battle will be up. She's a good battler, lots of experience. Uh, promoted from D2 last season, um, so she's definitely not like <laughs> a bad player, so you could learn a thing or two from her. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Next week we're up against Kyle, Cage the Two and his Harlem Gloom Trotters, who has done a number on both his uh, opponents this week. I won't tell you the scores for week two, but like I already said at the start, he'd beat Ellie 5 0. Um, He's got a very frightening team. He's got the likes of Zygarde, um, Snake Form, uh, what is it? Mega Tyranitar, Zapdos, Infernape. Lots of scary things. So, uh, yeah. Um, thanks for watching this video, guys. Make sure you stick around for next week when I do play Kyle. Um, and I'll see you then. Bye.